Welcome back to the Almost Shameless podcast. I am your host, Tanya Ray Fox. Thank you once again for joining me. The NFL season is officially arrived. Game one, Thursday night football. I am recording this before that game, but we are prepared to kick off week one of the NFL season. And most of you are ready to kick off Patriots season. And this feels like a bigger deal than usual, I think, for NFL fans, because last season was so tough to fully enjoy. We've talked about this before. We were all going through a lot, everybody dealing with COVID, lockdowns. Things were starting to get worse ahead of winter. There were all these restrictions. Fans weren't allowed at a lot of the games. There was just like so much going on that the NFL season just didn't feel the same. And there were a lot of distractions. And specifically for Patriots fans, it was such a tough, weird season between the Patriots being bad and not making the playoffs and Tom Brady going to the Buccaneers and winning the Super Bowl. It was just a lot. And there was just a weird season for the Patriots with the COVID and everything else. So this is the new fresh start that Patriots fans probably thought they were going to get when Brady first announced that he was leaving last March, right as the pandemic was hitting. And we thought that, you know, our lives were only going to be changed for a couple of weeks. Uh, But here we are. Things are moving along. They're progressing. There seems to be a light at the end of the tunnel. And there is increasing optimism about the Patriots. Uh, Since deciding that Mac Jones will be the starter going forward, everybody's had a chance to really look at the team and the roster the rest of the division, the rest of the conference. And suddenly the Patriots are emerging as sort of a dark horse. I know that a lot of the shows on my network at Fox Sports have started talking about this. The talent there is starting to keep an eye. They want everybody to keep an eye on the Patriots. I think everybody's starting to get a little worried that maybe Bill Belichick might have known what he was doing with building this team the way he has even with a rookie quarterback, like they look really solid top to bottom, but specifically on the defense. And I think people are starting to get a little concerned that maybe they've been underestimating this soft, tiny half a rebuild that Bill Belichick has pulled off since Tom Brady leaving. Um, That's obviously what is uh, looming ahead. And we will have our first real post game, post football week analysis show next week. But for this week, as we prepare for that, I have a few things that I need to get off my chest and sort of a mission statement, I guess, for lack of a better word that I want to share with people who listen and who watch the show. So I'm going to start off with that. You know, if you're going to listen to the show or you're going to watch it on YouTube or wherever you consume it, there are some things you need to know so that we can both, we can all move forward in good faith as the season progresses. And then I also want to take the time before this week kicks off, before the season kicks off, to for once and all clarify where I stand on Mac Jones, because it seems like people were a little confused last week. Everybody wanted a big apology from me because I, you know, because of the way I had talked about the quarterback battle all off season, as if I have something to be sorry for, which I don't, but we will, uh, I will address it and I will explain a little bit more about what I mean for about that. But, but to start, I will say this, I listened to your comments. I read your comments. I take time to see how people are interacting with the show. I have, I have a great respect for anybody who's tuning in and listening. And so I feel like it's important that I stay in touch with what people say. I take constructive criticism and and there's often things people say in the comments, even if they're trying to troll me where I think like they might actually have a point. And I guess if you have a point, then it's not quite a troll. It might just be sort of a a mean spirited suggestion. Right? So you know, one of the comments I recently saw was asking me why I say my name twice at the beginning of every show. Uh, So I adjusted that. I think it was a good point. I don't know why I was doing that. It was kind of like one of those weird quirks that I carried over from when I used to have a co-host on my podcast, uh, Fox and Fallon. And so uh, we would always say the full name of the show and then introduce ourselves individually. And then I just kept doing it. And I was like, that's, that is kind of stupid. So it's the Almost Shameless podcast. I am your host, Tanya Ray Fox. I have to get used to that. Great suggestion. But a lot of also a lot of things that I've seen and more than three, four times on each of my YouTube videos and different things and different clips that have been put out are people whining about women talking about football. And this is a topic that actually recently came up 
on Twitter because some really famous Twitter, internet, blog, podcaster, whatever, kind of went in on the idea of women ruining football and effeminating football and emasculating the game. And, you know, for the most part, the response from Twitter, sports Twitter was very, of course, like this is absolutely ridiculous. Um, And it was never really taken super seriously by the people in our circles, you probably watching and the people listening, but there are a few people every time I put out content, especially the visual content who seems so perturbed by the female voice and face in front of them. And a lot of times I'm sure it's because they just disagree with me. And so the easiest way to discredit what I'm saying is to point to my gender. But realistically, it doesn't matter, right? Because at the end of the day, I am speaking about football and I am getting paid to do so. And here I am on your screens and on your audio and you are somehow listening and watching. So I'm going to make one thing crystal clear. You have every right to your opinion. If you don't like listening to women talk about football or women talk about sports, no one is forcing you to. No one is forcing you to. If every single channel you turn to or podcast you pull up, you find yourself hearing women speak about sports, maybe the problem is you don't really like sports media anymore. And so maybe you shouldn't engage in it, right? Um, But realistically, there's still plenty of all male shows and podcasts and everything else for you to tune into. So I'm sure you can find them, but here's the thing. I don't care about your preferences. I don't care. And neither does my employer. CLNS doesn't care that you don't want to hear a woman talk about sports. Fox sports doesn't care that you don't want to hear a woman talk about sports. So you showing up in my comments to talk about it is a waste of your time. Please just know that you are wasting your time. It is way, way, way too late for you to try to litigate this. It's too late. It's gone. It's done. Women can be doctors. Women can be scientists. Women can talk about sports. If you could time travel back to the days where none of those things were possible, I would gladly put you in the machine myself and set the date. Tell me when you want to go back to, and I'll send you back there with all the other miserable bigots who couldn't stand any level of civility or equality in their day-to-day lives. I would gladly ship you back there. (laughs) You'd fit in a lot better and probably be happier. You'd probably get more attention. You'd probably get more affection. You'd probably do great. But in 2021, no one fucking cares. And this is the only time I'm gonna address this. So I really, really want all of you to hear me. I don't care what you think about my gender. I don't care what you think about how I got employed. I've been in the industry for over a decade. I'll be in it for another decade and beyond. It's not going to stop. No matter how mad you think my takes are or how much I offend you or how many times I have brought up something you don't care to hear about. It is my show, Almost Shameless, with Tanya Ray Fox for a reason. Just know that your objections are too late. The LinkedIn bio has already been formed. The portfolio is already done. The credentials have already been earned. The interviews have already been done. The articles have already been written. The paychecks have already been signed. It's too late for you to have this objection. It's like the world's stupidest Yelp page. You can go on to whatever five-star rated company you want and complain that you don't like the way the manager's voice sounds, but no one's going to take you seriously. <laughs> if you f- if you ha- find it to be some sort of cathartic experience to whine and complain about women covering football or sports in the comment section of a woman who covers sports, I, you know, do what you got to do. Just know it's falling on deaf ears. My colleagues don't care. Most of the people who watch and listen to this don't care. My bosses definitely don't care. They're the ones who hired me. Just go. There's so many other people you can go who look and talk like you, who can make you feel like you're important. I get it. You have preferences. I have preferences too. I don't like whiny snowflake incel boys who can't handle the fact that different types of people are good at different things. So, you know, I just don't surround myself by them. I don't listen to podcasts by them. I don't watch YouTube videos from them. And I just don't consume their content in any way. And my life is perfectly fine. 
all those options are out there for you. I am not going to apologize for having opinions different from yours. If I'm offensive or I say something out of line, then I'll apologize. But I'm not going to apologize for getting on a microphone and taking my years of experience as a writer and a producer and a host and someone who's covered this league since 2011. I'm not going to take all of that and then apologize when it turns out that I'm not always right 100% of the time. As of right now, I have no idea if I was right or wrong about anything, quite frankly, because game one hasn't even started, but let's say I am. You're not going to get an apology from me, which brings me into my next point, which is however things go with Mac Jones as the quarterback, first and foremost, I want the Patriots to succeed because I've been a Patriots fan my whole life. So of course I want the Patriots to succeed, but I also have a job to do. And that job is to, to the best of my ability, analyze and critique and speak about the things that I see, both on the team, in the league, in the media. So I'm going to keep doing that. And sometimes I'm going to hit the nail on the head and sometimes I'm not. Just like every single one of you do in your jobs all the time. So here's the thing. I didn't want a rookie to start. There's nothing to apologize for that. (laughs) I didn't want a rookie to start. I wanted Cam Newton to start because he's a veteran with more experience. And this was a team This is a team that I see succeeding everywhere else. And so I wanted the quarterback position to be as safe as possible. Bill Belichick has expressed he felt differently. I am perfectly fine with that, particularly in the case of vaccination status, which I said weeks and weeks ago. I am surprised Bill Belichick is starting a rookie. I did not think that was going to happen. Turns out I was wrong, but I wasn't talking out of my ass. Bill Belichick doesn't start rookies. He's never had to. He likes depth at every other position. Why wouldn't he want it at the quarterback position? I wasn't the only one either. After the preseason was done, most people agreed. They thought Cam Newton was going to start the season. They thought Belichick was going to start the veteran. It's an un like move to take this risk and he's doing it. That's fine. I know Tom Kern was telling you all year that Mac Jones looks like the second coming of Tom Brady. I guess we're about to find out if he's right. I hope he is. I hope he's right because that's the only way the Patriots are going to win a playoff game this season. You, I told you the rookie stats. I gave them to you. I'm giving you facts. I'm giving you facts and the history of the league and how unlikely it is for rookies to succeed in the playoffs, even with great teams, even with great defenses. None of that is like no longer true. It's still true. It's just that, Bill Belichick made a decision that I did not anticipate him making. And not many people did. A few, a few did. A few seemed very set on the idea that Mac was going to win this job. And kudos to them. Honestly, kudos. I'm really excited to see what he does in week one against starters, against a real defense, and against a coordinator who is very familiar with the Patriots and what they do and what Josh McDaniels does. I think it's going to be really interesting to see how it works out. And I am ready to see Mac unleash all of this stuff that everyone's been talking about that they see, you know, from him in these training camps and preseasons, because the preseason games were fine, but it just didn't, you know, it didn't, that's just not enough. We've seen incredible preseasons from other quarterbacks in the past on the Patriots. Most recently with Jarrett Stidham, it's just not enough for me. And I'm not going to get on a microphone and tell you that it is just because a bunch of other people are, I'm never going to do that. I'm not going to tell you something I don't believe just because it's an unpopular or unexciting opinion. Sometimes I can really tell the way things are going to go and have really strong convictions. And I will always share those with you, but anybody, and I mean this with all my heart and soul, anybody who tells you after three preseason games and a month of training camp that they know a rookie is going to succeed in the NFL is full of shit. They are lying. You can see things that you like. You can see signs that someone is working in a system or that someone has attributes that you find to be indicators of potential success. 
You can talk about those. You can say why you think they are going to succeed. You can say why you think people should be optimistic about a player. But when it comes to first round quarterbacks, there's no telling until they get out there and play in a, in real NFL games in an NFL season. So I, if everybody else is telling you why this is going to work, then what good is it for me to join the chorus when I have thoughts and skepticisms about part of that, that I could share with you when I can balance the scales a little bit and say, Hey, some of these things are absolutely true. Mac does appear to have all of these qualities that all of these beat reporters are telling you he has, but here's the other side of that coin. Here's the other side of the story, which is regardless of how talented he is, it's very, very difficult to win a playoff game with a rookie. It's less difficult to win a playoff game with a veteran with a ton of experience. Why wouldn't I tell you that? I'm not going to get out here and apologize for it. If Mac balls out in week one, we're going to break it down. We're going to talk about it. And if a month into this season, Mac Jones looks like the second coming of Tom Brady, I will tell you, wow, this is, this is surprising. I didn't see this coming. I really didn't see this coming. And here's why I will tell you why I didn't see it coming. And I will admit I didn't see it coming, but you are not going to get an apology for sports takes. It's not happening. That's not what we do. The people you listen to on the radio don't apologize for their sports takes. The people you watch on TV don't apologize for their sports takes. It's not a thing anyone does. People don't apologize. That's what we're, we're asked to do every single day. We're asked to have opinions every single day. If your job is to have opinions, eventually you're going to be wrong. In fact, you're going to regularly end up being wrong over the course of time. It's how you come to those opinions, what kind of information you're sharing in the meantime, that stuff's valuable. And if you can't get, if you can't understand the nuance of that and you can't understand where I'm coming from when I'm trying to share this information with you, then go somewhere where someone just yells and screams for three hours. Go to the radio. They'll just yell and scream caveman sentences at you for a few hours and you can, you can take it in that way. But that's not what we do here. If I'm ever morally wrong or I break with my own integrity or I say something really out of line, I will, of course. Just recently, I called out Scott Zolak for, for saying something really objectionable that went be way beyond having a sports take. If I ever do that, you will get an apology from me. I am surprised that Cam Newton is the starter. I am surprised that Mac Jones is the starter. I'm surprised Belichick went that way. I still don't really know what happened with Cam Newton. Other people were really on the ball in terms of recognizing where Josh McDaniels and Bill Belichick were at with Mac Jones. And they deserve the credit for that. I'm not asking you to give me some sort of applause. I told you I didn't think they were going to start a rookie and they did. I told you why. All my reasoning was fair. They just went in a different direction. I'm going to keep trying to learn about where this team is at, where Belichick's at. I'm going to keep doing what I've always done and follow my gut and my instincts on this. I'm going to, and I'm going to be right more often than I'm wrong. And if that's not good enough for you, that's fine. I don't care. But if you're going to get in the comments and ask me for an apology, you're not going to get it. And I'm still going to be on here every single week talking. So it's time we get used to each other, guys. You've got enough people saying one thing talking in a certain way, speaking about these things in a certain way. And you've got me over here doing things a little bit differently, sometimes having a different opinion, sometimes bringing a different perspective. I would encourage everybody to follow and listen to the beat reporters. They know and see this team every single day in a way that nobody else could possibly know and understand the team in certain ways. In other ways, they are way too close to it, way too invested in it. And you need to sometimes broaden your scope. You need to sometimes pull out. You need someone sometimes to tell you how to look at the bigger picture. That's what, that's why you need reporters, analysts, commentators, hosts, different people coming at things from different angles. If you want to get your analysis on Mac Jones footwork and passing technique, you don't have to come to me. If you want a broader understanding of how these patterns play out across the course of a season, and, and where these decisions fit into Bill Belichick systemically as a coach over the last 20 years, I got you. Different strokes for different folks. Go to the people you need for specific types of information. I will be here giving you 
the type of content that I bring from my perspective with my skill set, that's all I can do. I see a lot of promise in Mac Jones as a leader, as a game manager, as a passer, as a franchise quarterback. And I'm moving on from the fact that I didn't want the Patriots to start a rookie. They're starting a rookie and I'm on board. Let's do this but I'm not going to look at the season through rose colored glasses all year, at least not until I start seeing evidence that there's some rose to be seen. Let's get there and let's take this week by week and let's be honest with ourselves every step of the way as as honest as we possibly can be. Heading into a week one and acting like they can automatically challenge the bills for the division doesn't make any sense. I could say that right now, I could say that and say, look at the defense, look at the special teams. If they get Stephon Gilmore back and blah, 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 they could really roll. They could win. I could say all of that, but I, we haven't watched a game with this team. So what would happen is I'd say it and then down the line, I'd hope I was right. And when I was right, I could go back and say, I told you guys, I told you guys, but I didn't know shit. And no one else does either. They don't know anything. We can all do all of these guessing about how things are going to go, but we can only take the evidence in front of us and say, this is what we think could happen. And here's why. As of right now, there's no evidence. There's no reasonable evidence that the Patriots are going to be better than the Bills. Could they? Yes. Every year, Four new teams make the playoffs and four teams that were in the playoffs last year don't make it. Every year, things change. Of course, that's a possibility. But as it stands right now, not many people would take that bet. So I'm not going to sit here and give you a hot take just so that I can eventually be right down the line. At three or four weeks into the season, they look like they could go toe-to-toe with them. I'll talk to you then. And I'll tell you why I think that. I don't need to say things just for the sake, just so, so that hopefully down the line, I can say I was right. I'm not worried about that. And that doesn't mean I don't want you to hold me accountable, but let's be honest. You're not going to tell me, there's just not going to be very often that you have to tell me something I don't already know. I'm not one of those. I'm not going to get on the mic and pretend I saw Mac Jones as the starter all along. I'm not going to do that to you. I'm not going to get on here and lie to you. I'm not going to get, I'm not going to spend the next year telling you, I told you so while you throw receipts at me other like proving otherwise, I won't do that. I didn't even want the Patriots to draft Mac Jones. On draft day, I said, he looks the most ready to be a starter. I just think he's physically limited. I tweeted that. I know. I know he's capable of doing this. It's just not the thing that I wanted to see. And I've given you a thousand times the reasons why. Now that it's happening, I'm ready to assess this under these conditions with Mac as the starter. So I want to do that with you guys. But if you're watching, waiting every week. For me to apologize that I wanted Cam Newton to start or that I thought Cam Newton was going to start, you're going to be waiting a long time. It's over. I said what I said. I gave my reasons. It went a different way. Stick around. We'll we'll get through the season together. And just like with everyone else, you're going to continue to learn how I do things. I'm excited that you guys care enough. I'm excited that you're watching and that you are invested enough to try to to want to hold me accountable. And I will be accountable, but I will not be apologizing for doing my job on a regular basis. Now, if I stay wrong, if I just keep being wrong all the time, well, then I'm not very good at my job. You don't have to watch. You know what I mean? If I'm just constantly wrong and I constantly make no sense, tune out, you know? It's unlikely that that's going to happen. It's unlikely that I would be in this position if that were the case. It's unlikely that I'm a complete moron that people keep giving these jobs and opportunities to, but we'll see, I guess. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you guys. I'm sure you'll have plenty to say and I will have plenty to respond with. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, looking forward to the Patriots Dolphins on Sunday. Can't lie. I am kind of rooting for the Bucks to lose to the Cowboys on Thursday night just to make things interesting. I'm ready for some drama to go down for the NFL to just melt into chaos day one. Don't think it's going to happen, but crazier things have. So I'll be looking forward to experiencing that game with you guys live on Twitter. If you want to check me out there this uh, on Thursday night for the game, and then we'll touch base next week. We'll officially have an actual Mac Jones game behind us. We'll have real NFL Mac Jones to talk about. We'll have real 
Patriots defense without Stefan Gilmore. We'll see how that goes. We're going to have Tua versus Mac. We're going to have Brian Flores versus Bill Belichick. It's going to be a, a great way to kick off the season. I can't really think of a like more poetic way to start the season than with Belichick and Mac versus Brian Flores and Tua. It's just perfect. It's very Shakespearean in a lot of ways. So I, uh, I'm pumped about that. And I know we will be talking about it. So until then, have an awesome rest of your week. Have a great weekend. Football is finally here. Cheers, guys. I wish I had a drink or something that I could cheers to you, but uh, I have one in spirit. So we will talk soon. Thanks again for listening. Bye.